Hey guys, enter the stars. And it seems as though we are approaching the bottom of this rabbit hole. The root of everything involving the mass sacrifice of human lives throughout history. And this is why we need to turn to the true God. We have finally found the link between Lupercalia, Lycia, and ancient Egypt. Lupercalia being the Roman festivals being acknowledged today and synchronized with modern mass sacrifice of 9-11, of Fukushima, and of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. The definite link to the Roman festival. Well, now we have linked the Roman festival back to ancient Egypt. Much earlier in Earth's history, going back to just after the flood, when the sons of Ham, Ham being only one of three of Noah's sons that left the ark when the world began to depopulate, the son of Ham being Mizraim and being described in the Bible as Egypt, and all of the history going back to Lycia, Lupercalia, and the dog Anubis. Now, why would Satan impersonate Anubis with a dog? Because dog backwards is God. And Satan sought to counterfeit his identity onto that of God's to cause confusion and cause a great deception, which is exactly what's going on right now in Earth's history. People are doubting the word of God and the history of Jesus Christ, saying that these stories are just retellings through all different cultures and trying to defame the word of Christ. Well, I'm going to show you today how ancient Egypt worshipped the dog, the wolf, and Lycia. First, a quick recap to link Lupercalia back to Lycia and Lupercal and Luper, just stated here in Wikipedia. This source says that Lycopolis, more properly Lyconpolis, means city of wolves, is a classical name for the ancient city, known to the Egyptians as Saut, the guardian or place of the guardian. The Arabic form Asayut is derived from the Egyptian name. Both the hieroglyphics and the Greek names refer to the god Wepwewat, the deity who's represented as an ever watchful and warlike jackal. Okay. Located in the center of Egypt. Now, what you're going to notice about this word Wepwewat is that it has three W's W, W, W. We rebuild, we come back stronger. These were the words of Barack Obama. And in this description, they talk about how Wipoat was seen as a wolf deity. Thus, the Greek name of Lycopolis, meaning city of wolves. He was originally just a symbol of the pharaoh, associated with wolf-like attributes. It later became deified as a mascot to accompany the pharaoh. He was said to accompany the pharaoh on hunts in which capacity he was titled Sharp Arrow More Powerful Than the Gods. Where have we seen arrows before? Over time, the connection to war and thus death led him also being seen as the one open the ways and through duat for the spirits of the dead. Through this and similar, through this and the similarity of the jackal to the wolf, he became associated with Anubis, the god who weighs the hearts of people against a feather. The hearts of Lupercalia, Cupid, February 13th, Valentine's Day, converted to the Gregorian calendar, it's February 26th, the date of the World Trade Center bombing. That converted again is 311, which is Fukushima. 
This is Lycopolis. I'm seeing two different locations for Lycopolis. Upper Egypt. Now, this area was mentioned in the 88th episode of I Love Lucy. This Nile Valley, she calls it the land of Goshen. And this is the land of Goshen. It is also the Vega. The Vega meaning fertile meadow valley. And the Nile being the most notable fertile meadow valley in the entire world. Now, notice the coordinates 31 by 31. That is M is 13. 13 and 31 backwards. We have another location on the 31st East Meridian. As Yut, which is in Lower Egypt, as you can see on the map here. The same Meridian. And it is associated with Lycopolis as well. We have two Lycopolis locations. Here they link Azut as well to Anubis and Wepwawat. So you see, the worship of the wolf has happened since the beginning of post-flood history. So you see, war and death is the gateway of mass sacrifice. This is what I've been telling you guys. This is how they get the sacrifice to Satan. They trick you into killing each other. With misinformation and fear. So when people say that we create fear on this channel, I laugh because we never promote killing and death. In fact, we are just the opposite. We are trying to get people to come out of that mindset. And, and to have that perfect faith to the point where you know where you're going when this life ends. And that it doesn't matter if you die because you will go to some place better. Eternity. Now again, it says here, he was depicted as a wolf or jackal, as a man with the head of a wolf. Even when considered a jackal, he was shown with gray or white fur, reflecting his lupine origins, lupercalia. He was depicted dressed as a soldier, as well as carrying military equipment, a mace, and a bow. In later texts, Wiwapet is called Ra, so he is Ra, the sun god as well. Gone up from the horizon, perhaps as the opener of the sky guides the deceased into the netherworld. And here he clearly identified it as a wolf. The Egyptian jackal. And even Osiris himself was worshipped under the symbol of a wolf at Lycopolis. According to a myth, he had come from the shades as a wolf to aid Isis and Horus in their combat with Typhon. In Greco-Roman times, there was a distinct dialect of Coptic spoken in Eziut, known as Lycopolitan. So even the language was associated with these wolves. And now you know the ultimate truth. And you can decide which master you want to serve. And as I demonstrated to you guys in previous videos, Mizraim was the first pharaoh. It says it right here in Wikipedia. According to Genesis 10, Mizraim son of Ham was the younger brother of Cush and elder brother of Phut in Canaan, whose families together made up the Hamite branch of Noah's descendants. His sons were Ludum, Anamim, Libibim, Naphtulim, Parshim, and Cushlim. Out of who came the Philistines? The Philistines were giants in the Bible. Naphtalim sounds like Nephilim. According to Eusebius Chronicon Manetho, they suggested that the great age of antiquity in which the later Egyptians boasted had actually preceded the flood. 
and that they were really descended from Mizraim who settled there anew. They're saying here that the pyramids had been built by the wicked races before the deluge, but that Noah's descendant, Mizraim, was entrusted with reoccupying the region afterward. They identified Mizraim with the legendary first pharaoh, Menes, who built Memphis. We also have this book called Pharaohs of the Bible, Mizraim to Shishak. And it is the chronology of the complete pharaohs. Here is the book. Here is another source. Mizraim, first pharaoh of the Zoanite dynasty. Hopefully this will clarify for you guys. The reason for Lupercalia and modern sacrifice. Bringing it all the way back to the Nephilim bloodline that continued on post-flood that became Egypt and the cursed Canaan, which was also the son of Ham. And now we begin to understand the term wolf in sheep's clothing. We are the lambs. Jesus is the shepherd and Satan is the wolf. Take care and be safe, you guys.